In this video, we're going to take a look at uh, what are called logical tests in Excel. Um, they are also frequently called uh, conditions or Boolean expressions um, in other areas, but Excel calls them logical tests. And a logical test is basically something that is true or false. And uh, I've got some data here in A1, I've got some data in B1, and then I've got some questions I'm asking about uh, the data in those two cells. And uh, what we're going to do is we're going to put formulas here in each one of these cells to answer the question that's over here in column A. So I want to know uh, if A1 is equal to B1, and obviously they're not. Uh, so if I just type A1 equals, whoops, equals B1 and hit enter, that's what I get. And the reason I get that is because uh, if uh, you type in anything that begins with, with a letter, Excel assumes that that's a label, not a formula. So I have to go and make that into a formula. So let's just click up here. And remember, to make it into a formula, I have to put an equal sign in front of it. So let's put the equal sign in front and then hit the Enter key. And now uh, it's doing what we want it to do. Um, this looks funny with equals A equals B. But if you remember that this first equal sign here um, is just saying this is a formula, then the actual formula is a1 equals B1. And so what we're asking Excel to do is compare those two and see if they're equal and tell us if they are or not. And they are not, so it comes up with false. Uh, down here, what I want to do is I want to know if A1 is greater than B1. So I type equals A1, whoops, equals A1 greater than B1. And hit enter. And 10 is less than 20, so uh, A1 is not greater than B1, so we get false. Next one I want to do is A1 less than B1, and I should get true for this because 10 is less than 20. And then we're going to do greater than or equal to A, got to start with an equal sign, A1 greater than or equal to B1. And you can look all over a computer keyboard, you're not going to find a greater than or equal to symbol like you learned in algebra. We have to do two keystrokes to make it work. And so we use a greater than symbol followed by an equal symbol. And if I hit the enter key there, um, 10 is not greater than or equal to 20, so I get false. Uh, one other thing about this formula here, uh, when you do greater than or equal to, uh, if you put a space in between there, uh, yeah, Excel doesn't like that, so don't put a space in. Um, if you uh, turn them around and put equal to or greater than, it doesn't like that either, and you'll have to go in and fix it. So it's um, you type it the same way you say it, greater than or equal to, uh, with no spaces in between. Uh, down here, I want to know, uh, is A1 less than or equal to B1? So that's my formula. And hit Enter. And in the next cell, I want to see if they are not equal. So it's going to be equals A1. And the not equal symbol is a less than sign followed by a greater than sign. So the way I interpret that is it's, they're kind of saying, is A1 less than or greater than B1? And that should give us a value of true because they are not equal. And again here, the order of these symbols makes a difference. They have to be pointing away from each other. If you type them pointing at each other, Excel doesn't like that, and it will tell you that you have an error. Now, these values that are showing up here, uh, they look like words. Um, and uh, Excel displays them as words so that we can make sense out of them. But they're actually values, and they're stored internally as numbers. And um, Excel tells you that these are not words. They are values by doing two things. First of all, uh, you know, whenever we type in numbers, numbers are always right aligned in the cells by default. Whenever we type in text, like we did over here, text is always left aligned by default. But logical values are always centered. There's only two logical values, true and false. When true and false appear in a cell, unless you change the formatting, uh, the alignment, they will always be centered. The other thing it does is it always uh, puts them in uppercase letters. So they're centered and they're in uppercase. Now, what if for some reason, you're not going to need this very often, but what if for some reason you want the word false to appear or the word true to appear in a cell and you don't want the logical value? Now, if I just type the word true here, notice I'm typing it with both upper and lowercase letters. As soon as I hit the Enter key, um, it tells me that it has converted that into a logical value uh, because it is now centered and it's all capital letters. So what do you do if you really want the word true there? 
Well, what you have to do is you have to put an apostrophe in front of it to tell Excel that that's text. And note what happens when I do. Um, it still shows up the same way. It does not actually display the apostrophe in the cell, although it does up here in the formula bar. Uh, and it is left aligned. And another thing that I can do here is I can put, um, put it in both uppercase and lowercase letters. So if you see it like this, in a cell, it's if it's not all caps, you know that it's not the value true, and um, if it's left aligned, um, and you haven't done anything to change the alignment, then it's being interpreted as text. So uh, you can enter true and false if you want to. The times you'll have to do that, I think, will be very rare. Um, in general, uh, if you want true or false uh, to appear in a cell, normally you do it by putting in uh, using these relational operators to create a logical test. And uh, if you need to refer to the value true or the value false in a formula somewhere, which, which sometimes you need to do, um, never put quotation marks around true or false. Uh, never. Now, the reason for doing this um, is these logical values have uh, a lot of use in some other functions that are built into Excel. And one of those functions is the if function. So we'll take a look at the if function in our next video.